I'm the gentleman from New York. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. At this time, I'm pleased to yield five minutes to the gentleman from Texas, uh, Dr. Paul. The gentleman from Texas is recognized for five I, minutes. I thank the chairman for yielding, and I ask unanimous consent to revise and extend my remarks. Without objection. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise in opposition uh, to this resolution, not because I lack concern for the serious problems that the East Timorese are undergoing, and not for lack of humanitarian concerns for this group of people or anybody in the world. It's just that there is another argument to us intervening. Besides, we helped create the problem in Indonesia. In the 1970s, we were very supportive of the Indonesian government in their takeover of East Timor after it became independent from Portugal. So once again, here we are intervening. I would like to advise my colleagues that we are not just endorsing humanitarian, uh, and a humanitarian effort to help people who are suffering. We are literally giving the president carte blanche to go and commit war in this area. We are committing ourselves to troops, and it's an open-ended policy. We complained a whole lot about what was happening in Kosovo. It hasn't ended. It's continuing. This is just another example of being involved with good intentions, but with unintended consequences just hanging around the corner. And I would like to point out that some of those unintended consequences are rather serious. I would like to call attention to my colleagues, number 11, under the Resolve Clause, uh, making these points. This number 11 says, expresses the support for a rapid and effective deployment throughout East Timor of the United Nations Security Council endorsed multilateral force. This means troops. Our Security Council have already said it. What we're doing today is rubber stamping this effort to send troops into another part uh, of the world where we do not see an end to it. We do not know what victory means. We do not know what lay, lies ahead. Again, under, 19, uh, under number 13, it expresses the approval of the United States' logistical and other technical support for the multilational force of East Timor. Troops, that's what it means, endangerment and risk that this will escalate and could escalate. But even under 13, there's another part that concerns me a great deal. In the 1970s, we passed the War Powers Resolution. Both conservatives and liberals, Republicans and Democrats, endorsed the notion that presidents should be restrained in their effort to wage war without declaration. And once again, we're endorsing the concept that if we just subtly and quietly endorse a president's ability and authority to go into a foreign country under the auspices of the United States, we don't have to deal with the real issue of war. But under 13, uh, B, it explicitly restates the fact that a president in this situation can at least wage war for 60 days before we have much to say about it. I think this is dangerous. We should be going in the other direction. This is certainly what was expressed on many, many times on the floor during the Kosovo debates. But we lost that debate, although we had a large number of colleagues that agreed with, with that issue. We are now entrenched in Kosovo, and now we're about to become entrenched in East Timor. Not under the auspices of the United States, but really under the United Nations. I do not see that the sovereignty and the interests of the United States will be benefited by what we're getting ready to do. Number 16, under the Resolve Clauses recognizes that an effective United States foreign policy for this reason requires both an effective near-time response to ongoing humanitarian crisis in and progress toward independence for East Timor. If we decide that we have to, to fight for and engage troops for everybody that wants to be independent, we have a lot of work ahead of us. And, in addition, in the same clause, and a long-term strategy for supporting stability, security, and democracy. This is a major commitment. This is not just a resolution that is saying that we support humanitarian aid. This is big stuff. The American people ought to know it. The members of Congress ought to know it. This resolution just became available to me just within the last 20 minutes. It's been difficult to know exactly what, what is in it. And yet it's very significant, very important. And we in the Congress should not vote casually and carelessly on this issue. This is a major commitment. 
I think it's going in the wrong direction, and we should consider the fact that there are so often unintended consequences from our efforts to do what is right. I understand the motivation behind this, but tragically, tragically, this stuff tends to always backfire because we do not follow the rule of law. The rule of law says if we commit troops, we ought to get the direct and explicit authority from the Congress with a war resolution. This, in essence, is a baby war resolution, but it is a war resolution. Gentleman's time has expired.